Earlier this week, Dukoskopi TV reported a bearish sentiment on gold. But what of precious metals' more industrial sibling, the base metals? Kiran Ahmed of Oxford Economics joins me on the line now. Kiran, a weak trend at the LME following disappointing China PMI data has created a decline in copper futures in trading on this Thursday. With China the world's largest copper consumer and concerns over China slowdown prevalent in discussion, can we expect a hypersensitive copper market into 2014? Well, we are expecting um, weaker growth this year for, uh, for China as the economy rebalances towards more consumption-led growth away from investment, um, towards services and away from industry. So in terms of demand, we are expecting, um, on the demand side at least for China, that it would be less supported this year than it was last year. But probably the, the bigger factor this year for the copper market is, uh, is stronger supply trends. Um, uh, earlier this decade, we did see quite strong copper price uh, price increases as Chinese demand was fairly strong, and that led to uh, stronger investment in mining for copper. And some of that is now coming on stream. So we're expecting uh, stronger supply trends to actually exert downward pressure on prices, particularly as demand is not going to be as supportive as it has been in previous years. So I'd say for copper, we are expecting a decline, but that's going to be largely due to supply rather than uh, weaker demand. UC Roussel, the world's biggest aluminium producer, has forecast a 6% growth in global aluminium demand in 2014. But with indicators from the LME suggestive of a glut in supply, which side of this fence do you fall on? And is this likely to create bullish or bearish pressure on aluminium prices? Um, well, as I mentioned for copper, in terms of demand from China, the same thing sort of apply. We're expecting weaker demand this year from the key uh, consumer of metal. So demand won't be as, as supportive as we saw um, last year. Uh, but in terms of supply, um, prices are currently at a level where production costs, uh, where they're lower than production costs for many smelters. And uh, there's, there's quite a lot of oversupply in this market. Um, and that has led to a number of producers outside of China, such as Alcoa and Yusu Russell, implementing um, production cutbacks. Um, we've seen less of that in, uh, in China, but there are a couple of factors that, uh, that may cause Chinese smelters to curb production. It's firstly Beijing's commitment to curb excess capacity in energy-intensive sectors, and secondly, it's Indonesia's export ban on unrefined uh, ore exports that came into effect uh, last month. Um, China's um, two-thirds of China's bauxite supply comes from Indonesia, so that would have an impact on bauxite prices, and there would lead to some tightness in, in that market and possibly encourage some production cutbacks in China. So for the year as a whole, we are expecting um, aluminium prices to decline. But in the second half of the year, they might, may get some support from, from some production cutbacks. With the peak of the commodity super cycle been and gone, and with bull runs in a lull, which base metal products, in your view, are going to be the winners and losers of this year? Um, as, already, as I've already mentioned, um, some of the strong supply trends are likely to exert downward pressure on copper and aluminium. Um, another metal that's also likely to um, suffer from strong supply trends is iron ore. Um, similarly to copper, we saw very strong price increases uh, over the last few years. They've encouraged uh, investment and we're likely to see strong output trends in Brazil and uh, Australia as well as domestic Chinese production. Uh, at the same time, Chinese crude steel production is likely to grow at a slower pace, so we're expecting quite a sharp decline in iron ore prices. But there are some metals that are expected to ex experience supply tightness this year. Um, the ban on Indonesian unrefined ore exports is likely to um, has has already resulted in an increase uh, strengthening in nickel prices. That's likely to provide some support there, and also for tin prices. Um, at the same time, we are seeing um, some tightness in the zinc market as. Um, some uh, zinc mines are uh, due to close this year and next year. Um, so in terms of prices, zinc is expected to register the strongest annual increase of the base metals. Um, and because lead is also mined alongside zinc, we are likely to see some uh, price increases in the lead market as well. 
and lead will also be supported by um, stronger motor vehicle production this year. Um, and it's already been supported by the big freeze in North America, which boosted replacement uh, demand for car batteries. So in summary, um, we are likely to see um, the strongest performers likely to be zinc. Um, iron ore is likely to experience the, the strongest decline, followed by copper. Kieran, thanks for joining me. That's all for now. Join me tomorrow when I'll be bringing you the weekly wrap-up with yet another Market Insider. Goodbye for now.